Hey everybody, this is Perch. And uh, what 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 qualifies somebody to write a hero? Well, um, let's read this from Mark Wade. So, of course, the election uh, just happened, and somewhat surprising people. Uh, some of you were long term Trump voters. So, yeah, we were not surprised. But I think even the people who are pro Trump have to admit some surprise at the uh, the results. Um, but Mark Wade um, had, who had stated he is not a fan of Trump for sure, um, and had at one point made some comments about uh, I don't know. It, it was wrapped up in the assassination attempt and kind of his feelings like, you know, basically he was he was rooting for the bullet. We'll put it that way. Um, but he writes this tweet, even if um, this is this is 1 a.m. Who knows what time Eastern? This is about the time Pennsylvania had not been called, but it was it was looking pretty, pretty grim at that point for uh, for Harris. Uh, Mark Wade writes, um, even if by the way, his handle at the moment, this is from Blue Sky was Mark Wade should be working instead. And I think that's probably the summary to so many things, actually. Yes, yes, you should. Anyway, he writes, uh, even if by some miracle this turns around, I don't believe in the basic goodness of my fellow Americans anymore. And without this, I cannot write superheroes. There's no point. When you see a decline in the quality of my work soon, you'll be able to trace it back to this night. Now, so many things to take away from this. Uh, number one, if you are DC looking at this and you have just promoted uh, Mark Wade to Justice League, kind of your flagship title in your brand new All In initiative, you probably don't love to see uh, lines like, I can't write superheroes and uh, there's no point and you will see a decline in quality of my work. Those probably, that, that's probably not good news for you as a publisher to, uh, to see that, that commentary. Um, you know, the, the other top, the other, point in all this is I've done videos in the past where I say, you know, as a writer, one of the things you have to have is both empathy and imagination. And the empathy is that you need to be able to understand points of view from people who you are not. Meaning, if you're going to write the Red Skull, you don't need to be the Red Skull. That's where the imagination comes in. But you need to be able to portray the Red Skull in a villainous, hateful, destructive kind of way that is threatening to the hero. And uh, we've seen writers in recent times struggle to write villain characters because they, uh, they're they afraid that if they write villain characters too well, they'll be, uh, they'll be like, oh, well, you, you write that villain so good, you must be a villain. You know, kind of that commentary. And so, you, you, you know, it's part of the problem of kind of a lot of modern writing. Uh, the reality, though, is, you know, it, like, I, I, I don't know. I, comic writers have not been into space. They haven't uh, lived on Krypton. Uh, they haven't lived in the multiverse. They haven't. They don't have mutant powers yet. Somehow, some way, they've been able to figure out how to write these characters, uh, you know, lifelike with with depth and complexity. Um, because you know, you have to imagine these things. That's what a writer does. Now, you know, Mark Wade is disappointed clearly that the candidate of his choice did not win, and so he, there's a little bit of a tantrum going on for sure. And this this wouldn't be entirely new to the guy. But I, there, you know, if you look at the big picture again, Mark Wade is the uh, is a gentleman who, once upon a time, in acting as an editor, uh, made a joke about a uh, a comic creator who killed his wife with a hammer uh, after finding out she was having an affair. And the gossipy part of this is the person that she was having an affair with was potentially Wade himself, and he put this into a comic. It's part of what led to his blacklisting at DC. Is that he he basically put in this this horribly nasty thing into this comic. Um, and I mean, that's a, that's a story and a half. There's a video I did on that. Uh, but this was many, many years ago. And you could argue that if, you know, if the, the discussion here is the, you know, the basic goodness of fellow Americans, what does it say about somebody who jokes about a woman being murdered by a hammer? Um, that like that, what, what is, what is good about that? What is the goodness about that? But regardless, as a writer, whether life is going good, going bad, you're, you're pleased to the current events, you're not pleased by the current events, I grant you it can be distracting that these things are happening, but you should be able to rise above it and write superheroes. If you know how to write heroes, if you know how to, you know, get to the basic concepts of heroism and villainy, this shouldn't be a problem for you, regardless of what's going on in an election. And I mean, the reality is this election, uh, <laughs> I mean, you can look at it a number of different ways. If you are a uh, if you're a Harris supporter, though, and you're feeling like the entire world is against you, well, you know, I got news for you. She won 67 million votes. 
at this current moment as I'm recording this, uh, and that will grow as they count more ballots. Trump won 71 million votes. He won more, but 67 million is nothing to scoff at. And depending on where you live, like if you're nicely nestled in California or New York, you know, you're, 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 you're surrounded by fellow company. But, but regardless of all that, you, you need to be able to get along with the fucking people around you. Because one thing, uh, Mark, you know, Wade, it, it, this is what's so fucking pathetic about this entire goddamn thing. You're a comic writer who gets to sit on your ass and dream up adventures of superheroes doing heroic things. Somehow that is so goddamn impossible because the candidate you liked didn't win in a relatively close election. Okay, but somehow, some way, because you didn't get your way, you're no longer able to do a basic job. The quality of your work is going to decline. People are just going to have to deal with it. And uh, you don't know uh, about the basic goodness of Americans anymore. Well, buddy, how do you think the person who is making your food for the last four years felt when their candidate lost? Did you, were you able to, were you willing to give people a goddamn pass when they go into, when you went into a restaurant and you get some plate full of burned up shitty food and you're, and the, the guy who's cooking is like, well, I voted for Trump and your candidate Biden wins. So I don't believe in the basic goodness. Are you so incapable of understanding that people can have a different goddamn opinion that you're just going to throw a complete and utter tantrum because your guy loses and I give up. I can't work anymore. Well, fuck you then. Don't work anymore. Nobody's going to miss you. Nobody. You know, there's a lot of people whose careers hinge on this stuff. If you're Dan Mora, you're an amazing artist and you're going to be fine. But if you're the colorist or the letter or the assistant editor or some of the other people who are now on this all in Justice League book and you got your head writer who crawled his way back from being a complete blacklisted scumbag at the company and now is you know, whining about the quality of my work done to decline. Hey, guess what? There's people whose jobs, whose jobs are on the line here, who's, uh, you know, who are, who are trying to get by. They do not have the 30 years of royalties and other stuff that Mark Wade has. I don't know how he spent his money and how well off he is. But there's people here who are, you know, trying to get going with their career on a flagship book at DC and in many cases have worked their ass off to get to this point where they could actually be on this title. Hopefully it pushes to better things. Hopefully it pushes to job security. And those people, guess what? Probably voted for Harris as well. Several of them probably, I mean, who knows? But several of them probably did. And now they get to wake up and say, yeah, the guy who is uh, number one on my book is saying that the quality of the work's going to suffer and doesn't even know how to write heroes anymore. And this is before the big launch of your fucking title, you moron. What is the basic goodness there? You just screwed your entire team. And I I'm sorry, like, why, why play with, uh, with childish kid gloves with this stuff? You fucked your team. You fucked a lot of people at DC who are trying desperately to get back on the map, to be the number one comic company, to work in a, a really hard industry where the direct market is failing and they're trying to sell books and they're just trying to struggle to survive. And they're, they put, I mean, goddamn, the first time I heard about All In and some of the stuff DC was doing was well over a year ago. I think it was probably two years ago I first heard of these plans. They've been working all this way. DC basically forgave you for being a human scumbag with your dumbass hammer comment that they let you come back in and hand you the keys to one of their top books. And what do you do? You say you're incapable of writing superheroes anymore because your candidate lost. What the fuck's wrong with you? Okay, if you want to quit, if you're unable to participate within human society, then yeah, you definitely shouldn't be writing heroes because you have no idea what the concept of heroes are. But at least bow out and do it with some grace that doesn't screw everyone else you work with. What, what kind of charity is that? What kind of basic human decency is that? You fucked your team. You fucked a lot of people who put a lot of towers, time, effort, and pain into this. You fucked retailers who ordered big on your book, hoping to sell it. Now, granted, nobody's on blue sky, so who knows what it is, but let's, let's take his threat seriously. Let's say his quality of his work is going to tank after this. What good are you then? But what good are you, what good ever were you if something like this destroys your ability to tell stories about heroes? I know this is a bunch of hyperbole. I know you're being over the top, and I know you don't actually mean any of this, but at what point, are we collectively going to be tired of your bullshit? At what point are comic publishers going to say, you know what, I'm tired of taking a chance on this guy who is incapable of controlling himself, incapable of thinking about the team before himself, 
And I mean, God damn it, you're on a, a team hero book. And you can't, you, you, you can't help your team. So I agree with you, Mark. You don't belong doing this. Go do something else. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs>